Hello there and thank you very much for opening up this video, I really do appreciate it. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Bond, James Bond, I'm a health and fitness expert and I work with people who want to improve their quality of life, particularly those who want to lose weight. What makes my service different is that I'm the only personal fitness instructor in the north of England who's a qualified medical doctor and therefore I can take on cases that other fitness instructors cannot or will not bear. Now today I'm talking to you about a very important subject, smoking. I was very pleased to see uh, during the week that the Daily Express had published an article saying that Her Majesty's Government wanted everyone in the UK to give up smoking by the year 2030. A very, very laudable goal if I ever saw one. The Department of Health has set itself a great target, but there's one government department that actually wants you to smoke more than anything else. Okay, I'll come on to that in a minute. Now, I also talked to you about how I managed to get a man who had smoked for 30 years to give up smoking like that. Okay, really easy. Let me talk to you about a very serious matter though, okay? With the exception of smoking, of, with the exception of anything else, or, very, or let me rephrase that, with very, very few exceptions, nothing is more dangerous to the health and well-being of your children than smoking in front of them. Even if you smoke outside and they're inside, when you come in, you've still got all that crap all over you, okay? And that's going to, and they're going to breathe that in. OK, now, statistically speaking, for every cigarette you smoke uh, in front of a child, you're reducing their life expectancy by 10 minutes. The younger the child is, the more severe that's going to be. So please don't do it. To my mind, uh, smoking in front of children is tantamount to child abuse. OK, because basically you are knowingly and deliberately damaging their health. OK, it's uh, basically that simple. Now. Let me tell you why the, uh, the government department that wants you to smoke like a chimney. It's the taxman. The Department of Health will tell you, ah, yes, but um, smoking related diseases cost the taxpayer some five billion pounds a year. That's true. But the taxman will tell you, ah, yes, but um, tobacco revenue gives us 15 billion pounds a year. So great. They want to make all that money. The second thing that actually happens is, if you smoke from the age of 16 to your 65, okay, and you work, and you drink alcohol, and you eat fatty food, guess what? They're getting all your working life taxes off you, and then statistically speaking, you're very unlikely to make it to retirement age, which is why the, one of the reasons why they keep raising the retirement age, and you're, gonna, you're more likely to pop your clogs before retirement age. Now think about it logically. Government income is about £700 billion a year. One seventh of that, a hundred billion pounds, goes on pensions. We have an aging population and fewer people paying into the pot. So what happens? They want you to die off. This is why they do, this is why they do very little to actually get people to give up smoking. Um, if you work out the maths, cigarettes have actually never been so cheap. In the 1970s, cigarettes used to cost you about five pound a pack. Now, when your income is roughly about what? Uh, 40 to 50 pound a week it takes a quite a bit of a chunk out of, out of your out of your pay packet now a pack of cigarettes can set you back what at most a tenner minimum wage gives you 274 pound 38 a week doesn't take that proportionately takes a lot less out of you your, your, your wage packet so that's the harsh reality but it makes it even worse because most people uh, die without a will now if you die without a will then in some countries in the world, the taxman will take all your estate off you. So one, they've got your working life taxes off you. Two, they're not paying your pension. And three, they're getting your estate. <laughs> so the taxman you know, benefits three ways. So you know, you're doing the taxman a huge favor. Now, let me tell you uh, an easy way to, um, what do you call it, give up smoking. When I was there, well, first of all, let me tell you two tragic stories. When I was a third year medical student, I was sitting in a clinic and this lady came in and this lady's no longer with us. So I'm not preaching confidentiality here. Uh, <clears throat> what actually happened was this lady gave a classical history of lung cancer. And the consultant, uh, she said to the, to the consultant, is it cancer? And he came straight out with it. Yes, I think it's cancer. And the lady then said, should I give up smoking? He said, you've been smoking for over 20 years. It won't make any difference now. Generally speaking, smoking related diseases have very few symptoms until the disease presents. Whilst the disease is developing, 
the patient will subconsciously change their lifestyle to accommodate their impairment. So, for example, if you're getting increasingly short of breath, you will start driving everywhere. You won't walk anymore. Okay, so you won't exercise. Uh, you'll subconsciously change your lifestyle to accommodate that. Now, very sadly, that lady's no longer with us. Um, so I'm not breaching confidentiality. You can't breach confidentiality over someone who's dead. Okay. Uh, although I did have her permission. Okay. I've still got I've still got the consent form. Now, when I was a final year medical student, I uh, had the great experience of getting a man who, uh, who smoked for 30 years to give up smoking. Now, you're probably wondering, how the hell did I do that? I asked to see this patient, had all his results in front of me. I took a full history from him. I said, sir, uh, do you have any grandchildren? He said, yeah. How old are they? Six and eight. Do you love them? He said, more than anything, any, in, more than anything in the world. I said, do you want to watch them grow up? He said, yes, again, more than anything in the world. I said, sir, I'm going to give you a choice. On the one hand, you can continue to smoke. smoke. On the other hand, you can watch your grandchildren grow up. But I'm telling you here and now, if you continue to smoke, you will not live long enough to see your six-year-old grandchild's 10th birthday. Now, the guy got in shock very quickly. His eyes filled up with tears. Opened his jacket pocket, took the cigarettes out, put them in the bin. He never touched another one. His wife was amazed. She, she actually said, I've been trying to get him to give up for 30 years. You just managed to do that in seconds. I said, yes. And the reason being, and very sadly, this man is no longer with us. I do have his wife's permission to reveal this to you. But sadly, his wife and her him are no longer with us. OK, again, you can't breach patient confidentiality over someone who's dead. Anyway, so what then goes and happens is um, let me uh, tell you how to give up smoking. If the, in any situation, if the why is strong enough, the how will always follow. It's that simple. So if you have a strong enough reason why, you will basically, um, what do you call it, um, find a way to give up smoking. Now, I've given you a strong enough reason why, basically, to the, the health and well-being of your children. And obviously, you want to watch your, your children grow up. If that isn't enough, then, you know, you need a little bit of help. If you look below you'll see a link to a two things. One, the Daily Express article. And secondly, I work very closely with a young lady who is a uh, hypnotherapist who sells smoking cessation CDs. Um, that's a, it's a very good £12 investment. Trust me on this. Uh, as long as you want to give up smoking, it will work. Okay, it's as simple as that. But as I said to you before, um, it's very, very easy to um, give up smoking if you have a strong enough reason why. Okay, my name's Bond, James Bond. Leave you shaken but not stirred. See you soon. Bye-bye.